I'm Bob Vanderplatz, and it's my honor to serve as the President and CEO of The Family Leader. The mission of The Family Leader is quite simple, to strengthen families. Not long ago, I was in Texas, and a well-known conservative came up to me, and he said, we Christians, we conservatives, we constitutionalists, we have a problem. And the problem is quite simple, that we're consistent. That when we go to vote in an election, whether we win or whether we lose the election, the net result is the same. We take our ball and go home while our opposition stays in the game. At The Family Leader, we believe it's no longer acceptable to take our ball and go home. We wanna stay engaged in the game, engaged in the future for the family. That's why we are building a great statewide network so that we can have influence and impact for the family from the schoolhouse to the White House and everywhere in between. We do this through a variety of avenues, but the foundation for the family leader is truth. We believe we need to be a vehicle for truth in a culture that's been inundated with lies. Darla and I have four boys. I used to be a teacher and a coach and a high school principal I still speak to a lot of youth through a variety of assemblies. And if the youth have a question, it's simply, what is truth? Well, I don't tell them truth is based on because Bob Varenplot says it's right or wrong or because Darla says it's right or wrong or because some pastor says it's right or wrong. We say it's right or wrong because of what God reveals in his word. God's holy word, his scripture, is the foundation of truth for the family leader. In like manner, because we live in the United States of America, we base our, our truth on the Constitution. Some of you might recall that in November of 2010, we spearheaded a charge to oust three Supreme Court judges. Our opponents will say about this historical vote that it only had to do with marriage. Yes, marriage was the issue, but it is also about judges stepping outside of their constitutional limits to make law from the bench, to execute law from the bench, to amend the Constitution from the bench. And that's why we felt we needed to lead a charge to hold that judicial activism in check. So at the family leader, we base our truth on God's word and on the Constitution of the United States of America. The family leader believes strong marriages lead to strong families, which lead to strong societies. And that's why we are so committed to the Marriage Matters Ministry, where we go shoulder to shoulder with engaged couples, newlyweds, and marriages who may be going through a difficult time. Granted, any of us who are married, we know that marriages can be tough. The family leader isn't here to beat up anyone for, for the past, but what we want to do is to instill the foundation and the principles to build and strengthen marriages for the future. That's why we are also so committed to the small I in our name, the family leader. I used to coach and when I coached, I'd used to say, there's no I in the word team. Well, there is an I in the word family. And that's why you'll see all of our marketing materials will show a small I in the name of family. We believe marriages are best served and families are best served when we as individuals die to ourselves and we emplace the small I versus the big I for the efforts to strengthen the families. If you believe you or your church could benefit from the Marriage Matters Ministry, I'd urge you to contact the family leader or go to the Marriage Matters website, marriagematters.org. At the family leader, we believe we fulfill our mission of strengthening families by being a voice in the public arena. This is what gets all the press. Have you ever heard that Christians or people of faith should not be involved in politics or in government? At The Family Leader, we believe God has three institutions, the family, the church, and government. And if he's instituted all three, I believe they're all near and dear to his heart. This might be too tough for a family video, but I believe it's spiritually negligent to remove our voice of faith from the public arena because what happens in the civic arena reflects the soul of a culture. We need to have our voice heard and we're committed to having our voice heard. That's why we have two full-time people 
at the state capitol every day that the legislature is in session. We call them our Ezekiel 33, our watchmen on the wall. Chuck Hurley, our president of Iowa Family Policy Center, he leads this charge. And basically all it is is that if it's good and if it's right, we promote it. If it's wrong or if it's bad or if it takes away from the family, we try to stop it. Anything that strengthens the family we're for, for the sanctity of human life from conception to natural death, for the foundation of family, one man, one woman marriage, sticking to the constitution and the separation of, of powers, but also on pro-family economic policy, pro-family budget policy, energy policy, defense policy, anything that impacts the family, we want to have our voice be heard. Frequently, I get asked by the media, Bob, how has same-sex marriage impacted your marriage with Darla? Quite frankly, it hasn't, nor do I expect it will. But we're asking the wrong question. It's not about what is it gonna do to my marriage with Darla, it's about the next generation and the next generation. Right now as a country, we're wrestling with the national debt. Some of us turn on TV and we see $14.3 trillion and we ask, how can we do this? The reason we're doing this with the national debt is because the focus is on me, not on the next generation. We as people of faith are called to have a multi-generational focus. And that's what we at The Family Leader are doing. I support a lot of missions and mission fields. Mission fields in Africa or Haiti or the inner city. I support them and I applaud the efforts of many who are reaching out to share the good news with, with people in remote areas or in the in, inner city. But this area of public policy, this area of government is also a mission field where I believe we need to be engaged and we need to be engaged for the sake of the next generation. As you can see, strengthening families through truth, through biblical God-honoring marriages, and through pro-family public policy is most certainly a mission field. And this mission field needs you. As I go across the state and across the country and talk about strengthening families, typically after the speech, people come up to me and they say, what can I do? The best way for anybody to do something is to get engaged, to be involved. I'd ask that you pray for the family leader. I'd ask if your time allows that you volunteer for the family leader. And I really ask that you consider a donation to the family leader. I really believe, as the scripture says, where your treasure is, that is where your heart is as well. This mission field needs to be resourced so that we can take a strong stand for the family. And I believe when we come together and we resource this mission, we will be able to strengthen this family through this generation for the next generation and for future generations. I pray that God blesses you, he blesses your church, he blesses the family leader, and that he would always choose and have reason to bless this country that we have the privilege of living in.